You're listening to Graphic Novel Explorers Club Podcast, an audio book club. Greetings, Explorers. I'm one of your hosts, Johnny, joined by... Dennis. And... Jake. Today we are discussing Money Shot, Volume 1, by writer Tim Seeley and Sarah Beatty, and artist Rebecca Isaacs. We hope you've read today's title because all three of us read the book, so beware, spoilers ahead. Explorers can share their opinions and thoughts with us by leaving a comment on our Facebook page or over on Twitter and Instagram at GN Explorers Club. Graphic Novel Explorers Club is available wherever fine podcasts are found, including the YouTubes. That's right. Today we're looking at Money Shot Volume 1, published by Vault Comics at the beginning of the pandemic last year, March of 2020, written by Tim Seeley and Sarah Beatty, art by Rebecca Isaacs. And uh, had you guys heard of this book before? Uh, I've never heard of the book before. I know Tim Seeley from Hack and Slash. Uh, I haven't oh, actually that? read. That's another popular comic series. I actually haven't read it. I've been meaning to. I know it's popular. And I oh. believe it was optioned to be a TV series. And so I've been meaning for us to to cover it. And so that's how I know his name. I know. I think he also did. Uh, I think there was like a Deadpool versus Thanos. Yes. Yeah, he, he's done. He's he's in the industry for sure, and I know Sarah Beatty from the Twitterverse. She's on there. She does a bunch of funny comments. I think her name is uh, Nacho Sarah, but I I haven't read any of his comics before, and this is I think her first comic. Having written for a Deadpool comic, I kind of had a I don't know an idea of what I was getting myself into. Yeah, I wasn't uh, aware that was going to be so graphic, but <laughs> oh yeah, no, it, it definitely sets the tone on the on the first page with the the, the fish man scene. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it is a uh, very um, cavalier with the f word, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 story actually, because we read volume one, starts with starts off with in twenty twenty seven, an advanced alien civilization made contact. And the people of Earth discovered they were not alone. An offer to join the civilized universe was made, but then the aliens saw what a total shit show Earth was. Engaged in hundreds of wars, led by greedy politicians, fumbling towards advanced technology, humanity was deemed not worth the effort. The offer was withdrawn. Unable to build spaceships capable of efficient interstellar travel, and distracted by petty bickering and pop entertainment, humans eventually lost interest in the stars. Now, in 2032, amid an anti-science presidential administration, public apathy, scientists in an economically crippled America struggle to find innovative projects. This feels like they were looking into a crystal ball. I mean, I know this was, they probably started writing this maybe like around the beginning of the Trump presidency, but like all the shit show that <laughs> happened, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. For this sure. And, like America. and to be perfectly honest, I mean... Uh, you guys probably remember, I remember at least, like being amazed by space travel. Like I look forward to like a space shuttle launching, you know, reports talking to astronauts. Nowadays, they don't re you don't really hear about it much. Maybe Elon Musk fires off a rocket and you hear about that. But you don't get the kind of wonder that we used to get back then. Now, we you know, were, our childhood was kind of at the tail end of the space age. Mm hmm. I tried getting my kids into it and, you know, there's an app where you can actually tell when the International Space Station is going to be above your house mm. and you can actually see like a little bit of a light flash and like I flipped out. I didn't know that was a thing and none of them wanted to see it and I, <laughs> I dragged them out and they were like, yeah, whatever. I was like, did you see that? That thing's in space <laughs> and yeah, they, they could give a shit. So is it on YouTube? No, then I don't want to see it. Uh -oh. <laughs> Anyways, so our main characters are Dr. Christine Ocampo, physicist and team leader, Dr. Bree Wander, physicist, Dr. Annie Leong, epidemiologist, Dr. Omar Steinberg, astrophysicist, and Dr. Doug Koch, biochemist. And that's spelled K-O-C-H. No, I mean, that's his last name, not how you spell biochemist. I'd be way off. If that's how you spell biochemist. Uh, no, no, you mean, that is not how you spell it. Would you go with cock or would you go with coke? It's cock. And the reason I know this is because I uh, knew this guy when I used to live up in Spokane, Washington. And that was his last name. And he, he said it was cock. 
<laughs> Plus, they make a joke in this later about how uh, he wants to call himself Super Massive Black Hole. And then uh, Dr. Ocampo's like, but your name's Doug Cock. That's already a poor name. Oh, my God. <laughs> So the team's working on this project called Starshot that is to get them into outer space, but they can't get any funding for it. And the media and other people dubbed it Money Shot. She comes up with the idea of, well, let's just crowdfund this through sex tapes in space. And that gets them their funding to go to outer space. And this comic book strike, strikes me as like, I wonder if it was influenced by the Kinsey Institute, you know, at the beginning of the Kinsey Institute the initial doctors and and Dr. Kinsey and his wife and, and the students and would all fuck each other. They were all part, that was like part right. of how they did their experiments. I was like, I wonder if this comic book was influenced by that. Probably. I, I would imagine. Cause I can't imagine in real, I mean, this is a comic book, so I'm not going to say that, but part of me did have uh, some problems with like, what if someone wasn't on board? Would they feel peer pressure? You know, they don't necessarily yeah. want, they have to have sex with each other. And this is, they're all like pansexual. On top of that, they would have to film themselves and be displayed for all the world to see. So that's a lot to ask of someone. Uh, so, yeah, they, they work you know, through those hang, those those types of potential hangups like pretty quickly. Like, it just, yeah. everyone, everyone's just like, oh, I'm on board after, you know, a couple of pages. And, and right. the, well, the, tab the table is basically set that they're up for anything at that point. She pretty, But she approaches it, Dr. Okapa, approaches it from like she's a good salesperson because she tells him like look if you if you get on board you can do your research in this if you get on board we'll be in outer space and you can do this up there so it's like they all they're like such scientists that they're like okay that's the means it's just a means to an end yeah yeah oh and for the listener we are still recording these remotely probably tell that oh from, uh, but, I'll um, also warn listeners that given the subject, uh, this is kind of, we might have a graphic discussion. So be warned about the the final content wise. battle of the, this, right. the final so, battle of this. Right. So there's yeah. a lot of sex, there's a lot of genitalia. So, uh, now, yeah. It, given, given the premise of this, this comic, did you think that it was, and, and, and maybe gratuitous is not the, the right word for it, but. I mean, I, you kind of I know see what, what you're getting you, at. You know, it it, it was, it, it seemed it, to me that it could still be dialed back in a way a little much, but this was like, this is full tilt, you know, pedal to the metal. There's a lot of fornication going on. And, and it's, yeah, but this strikes me as like the sex in this is like something that you would have seen as a kid in a National Lampoon's magazine. It's like cartoony adolescent minded sex. It's not like adult sex. Yeah. I Plus think that the art definitely, I don't, and I think I've said this before, like I feel like the art didn't kind of quite match the the tone of what they were going for. They, there were some issues, like the, some things that they were kind of really delving into, like, you know, sex versus intimacy and, you know, those kind of bigger issues, but it's it, the cartoony aspect of it still kind of, I don't know, I guess took something a little bit away from, from it. Yeah, and I will say also, I, I never read it, but speaking to what you were saying, Johnny, it reminded me of Barbarella. Now, yeah. I, Barbarella actually, uh, for those who don't know, was based on the movie from the what, 60s or 70s. It was actually based on a French comic, and it had like bits of Barbarella, bits of heavy metal, kind of all kind of intertwined in there, you know, a lot of sex positivity. I would agree that it, it reminded me more of like uh, Playboy comics or National Lampoons in the sense that it's above what a normal comic would show, but it's not like a porno. Like, you or know, it like doesn't take a, like pages of sex. <laughs> or it'd be like the cartoons in a Playboy magazine. Like those, That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like the ridiculously over the top right. sexuality. Side um, note, they, I think they either got their first issue republished or they have an original story published in playboy magazine this comic book yeah mm -hmm. they got a contract <laughs> so yeah yeah full, full circle <laughs> yeah. and also i i feel like it, it this is like a companion piece to sex criminals which we <laughs> covered in episode 55 you know where it was i, I feel like this is a stronger story i'm I, i'm still not 
I don't know if I would ever continue the story past this first volume. I, I don't think it's really for me. But I, like, if you like sex criminals, I think you would like this comic book. Yeah, I would definitely. Com- I was thinking a lot about sex criminals and Ripple, and and to your point, Jake, like I was wondering, would the story have been better served if they dialed back the sex a little bit? But when I read it as a whole. I kind of accepted what it was, you know, what yeah. it was trying to be a, a sex romp kind of thing. Uh, and so I was fine with the amount of sex that they had. That wasn't the problem. But, you know, to be perfectly honest, like when I read a book that has sex in it, I don't know. I'm not like sex comedies for, for books doesn't really work for me. Most of the time, I like something more intellectual, like Ripple, I would say, Johnny, the one that we read was a lot more gratuitous. But I felt it delved a lot more into the psyche of the person and was just a little more interesting to me. It was, it was, it was lewd, but I don't know. It was a, a much deeper story than what this is trying to be for obvious reasons. This one is just yeah. trying to be a sex comedy and that's fine. What it's trying to be is just for me, that's that the ripple story spoke more to me than this one. If uh money shot had been a movie, it would have, it, it, I feel like it would have been a Blake Edwards movie who did skin deep with John Ritter, where there was that glowing oh, yeah. condom scene. Right. Where, you know, it's like like that kind of slapsticky comedy, mm-hmm. sex comedy. But yeah, no, Ripple was, I, I really liked Ripple. I, I still own it. I've got the hard copy in there. I've got the hard copy in, in my like my little bookshelf over there Cause you in have the books. other room. Because I have books. That's a callback to a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this is something Dennis and I were talking about before we started recording because I have books. <laughs> we got books. I got books too, son. What was that? Was that from, I got guns. You got, I got guns too, son. From, is that from Wu-Tang Clan? Something, something like, like that. that. <laughs> so I wonder if this series is, is going to be more like, because they, I wasn't expecting them to be off on another alien planet right away, and so yeah, so they, they of, definitely like jump right into it. And actually, the 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 world that they went to, Dry Reef, I thought that was kind of a, a cool concept of this world that that's um, you know kind of in decline, but you find out later on that it's got this underwater ocean or under under the ground ocean and. All of the life forms are kind of aquatic based creatures. I, I, I just thought I thought that was kind of just like a, a cool concept that yeah. was, was interesting. Yeah, I, I really liked there's a lot of gla- gladiator scenes, which is kind of a throwback to old sci fi or like right, Star Trek. Sure. Uh, and I was, yeah, that was just to say, is like, I wonder if they're going to, is this going to be like Star Trek meets Kinsey Institute meets sex criminals? Where they're just out exploring and constantly fucking and trying. No, like, absolutely. This is like a, a crew full of Captain Kirk's. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's what Rikers. it is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Command or Commander Rikers and Captain Kirk's just out. Yeah, <laughs> space just laying cable everywhere yeah. they go. Plus, horny Spocks who are in, in heat. That's yeah. that's what he got going Possibly on. Possibly in Pondfar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or what was the yeah the 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 lightning storm? Throwback to uh, Wonder Twins. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about the, the the sex lighting store. And that's another funny thing. I really, I, I when it, I saw it, I, I saw it coming, but I thought it was pretty funny. Is so our our crew winds up going to this planet that needs to be saved, and then the big bad guy kind of tricks them into, you know having sex with them to save the planet, which was really just part of their plan to rule the planet. And then how they get back at that person is by fucking on camera and making the entire planet just devolve into a big orgy. Right. Uh, Everyone's horny. (laughs) Yeah. That's how I describe this comic. It's horny. The the whole thing. It's just, this book is horny. That's true. Yeah, this is one horny book. <laughs> I actually, I will say that uh, you know, given it was out in March, I will say that it almost seems like speaking of your crystal ball, Johnny, they almost were able to predict in some ways 
a combo of Kickstarter meets OnlyFans because you know uh, yeah, uh, yeah. in many ways this is this is you know instead of going to you know it, well, to set up the world everyone's bored on earth with sex every every type of sexual act is available through every you know every kind of means and people are just bored with what's on the internet like, and like one of the jokes was that you could find people who fuck hot sauce <laughs> right and and so they found that they could have a niche market because we're going to screw aliens that you've never seen. <laughs> and so it was it was very interesting for them to, to to raise money. Although I will say, knowing people who run an OnlyFans, it's interesting because I would think that in order for them to generate that much content on a regular basis and have people keep paying, that they would not have enough time in the day to actually do the science stuff because they got to travel to the planet, they got to do their science stuff, and oh, then they're, they're not... <laughs> yeah, they're not. They, they, I, they, one of the things of this book is like the the science has been put on the back burner. They just right. seem to like fucking. <laughs> well, and I mean, honestly, that's true of any content creator, where whether it's podcasting, YouTubing, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. You realize that this is a fun, quote unquote, job, but it, it is a job. You're always trying to generate content. You're always trying to go on social media to make contacts, and so for them to actually realistically think that they could somehow also do amazing stuff and cure cancer and research whatever viruses. I think it was pretty funny that, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why, you know, Kirk was always willing to beam down to a planet and let everybody else on the ship do everything so he could beam down and, you know, fuck a green person. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a record was like when they found that hedonism planet and he was record was like, uh, all right. <laughs> this is what I in. signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I got into interstellar exploration. <laughs> it was in the brochure. <laughs> I read Kirk's captain, uh, right. logs and I was like, I am in, I am in all the way. That's how they I'm recruit fucking- all the Starfleet people. <laughs> no, just the horn dogs. Maybe, maybe that's the enterprise. Maybe that's what the enterprise is for. Is for like people with uh, sexual addictions. Although they, I, uh, I must have missed the, the part because you know this is a very sex positive book. But I must have missed the part where what do they have like a, a a rocket launcher that shoots condoms out? Because you know every time when they started that orgy on the planet at the end, these condoms rain from the sky, and I was like, yeah, I missed that too. I thought maybe it was like that's precipitation on that planet i i I couldn't tell i know i think it had something to do like they had those uh cod pieces that they that they launched out and and i think that that was that that's just uh, how i I just thought that that was part of it but maybe they initiated like some bombing run yeah but instead of those (laughs) cod pieces just had little cameras in them and like an automatic condom yeah you know (laughs) so you gotta so you gotta erect the condom was right there it's 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 a two-part system I mean, for for them, that's fine. But there was condoms raining on the aliens for them to use. And so, mm-hmm. like, the whole population, which, you know, uh, I would also say that's very presumptive that they would actually have genitalia. Like Matching that. genitalia, yeah. What if it was a blob person or, like, that lava creature that Spock touched? <laughs> that one well, that. <laughs> the thing that could burrow through rock? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one thing in this book that... I thought was like really deep. Like it was much deeper than should have been in this book is when Dr. Omar Steinberg and Doug Cocker and Dr. Doug Cocker having a a conversation and Doug, he uh, sort of humiliates or, you know, kind of makes fun of Omar and he's really sensitive about it. It's like right after they had sex and he said, you know, my dad, he would humiliate me and do it on camera. And I was like, I bet you there's so many kids out there that are going to be having the same exact conversation in therapy 10 or 20 years from now. Cause they're like, yeah, I just wanted to be a kid and my fucking mom and dad wanted to be Instagram stars. So they were constantly filming me doing shit often when I was like crying or, you know, I was feeling humiliated or I didn't want to be on camera and I'd be screaming, don't do this. And they would still put me on camera. So I thought that was like really, uh, much deeper than this it should have been in this comic book. Well, but I think that there are a couple of times where you you saw some like I don't know some cool character development, like when Cock and the I forget the the other scientist's name, the the one that's a little bit chubbier. 
Oh, Annie Leong. Yeah, and and there's a, there, there's they did that. Like not everybody was like comic book hot. Like, yeah, she yeah. Was just like I, I thought, like there there were a lot of elements that that were you know as as Dennis was saying very you know sex positive and there was a moment between with them where she was kind of um, not belittling him but just saying like you know it wasn't it wasn't great but then he kind of you could see him put in the effort to you know to to do things that you know was a was a turn on to her Mm -hmm. and then later on you see that same character you know kind of have that kind of sensitive moment with with omar but then at the end of it he tags it with a you know a a joke kind of you know making fun of him kind of like you know Mm -hmm. busting his balls and like I was like, all right, that's kind of a, you know, you see some kind of dynamics in a character and, you know, kind of a, a very absurd premise comic book, you know. So yeah, that, speaking of what like, you were talking about, Johnny, uh, yeah, I can't imagine what it would be like to be that kind of kid because not only did your parents do that and you found that humiliating at that day, but can you imagine having that to live on the internet forever or someone maybe yeah. recognizing you? Oh, you're that kid, blah, blah, yeah. blah. I mean, that for that memory to kind of be permanent on the internet is kind of traumatizing. A, a moment of humiliation right. permanently. Plus. It's not like you're an adult and you made a dumb decision or you did something. You're like, I fucked up. It's like you're a kid at the mercy of your parents putting right. something out there. Likes, yeah. One of the things I really appreciate about this comic book artist and writer, Lucy Nisley, who we read her uh, nine months and then I lost the episode or something like that. But she does a lot of her comics – and and like daily illustrations involve like her family, her her husband, her son, who's a toddler. Well, now he's probably like three or four or five ish. And she doesn't put her son's real name on there. She calls him um, pal. And anything she illustrates about him, she's like, I I, I keep it. I I don't. I'll illustrate about him as an artist, and I like to share my art. But if it's something that feels like personal, or he tells me not to do it, then I won't. Because she's like, I want him to be separate from i want him to grow up mm-hmm. feeling like his childhood wasn't for sale right so what was the the videos that the dad did in arrested development <laughs> <laughs> where it was like in fights or something like that and right. then, like they recognized yeah. him and he, you know like they he he wanted the milk or something like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um o- overall what what did you guys think of the book I really liked it for what it was. Like I said, I, I I don't think I could read constantly comics like this. But you know, for a short series, I thought it was funny. I thought the premise was actually pretty smart. I mean, how else are you going to raise money? Like I said, in this day and age of OnlyFans, uh, sometimes you have to have some kind of hustle to get funds when a normal stream of well, I wouldn't say normal, but an alternate stream of funds isn't available because you know, sex work isn't bad work. It's just not something that everyone chooses. And I mean, like we talked about, Jake, you know, some people made that decision pretty quickly. I don't think in real life it was a more serious book. I think some people would might be drop off, you know, have some hesitation. Yeah. Everyone was on board, which was somewhat unusual. But given uh, the nature of the book, it was fine. I, you know, and, it's, it's a fun read. And another thing is like no one has any sort of like uh, conflict of feelings like, well, I'm starting. Oh, I mean, for sure. Dr. Dr. Ocampa and Dr. Steinberg have had a previous relationship like romantic relationship but everybody's sort of like in their own silo of well we're just fucking you know there's no there's no sort of romantic entanglements at least in this volume who knows it could be further down the road there's some entanglements but but well and that's 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 a great point johnny you know and what we talked about everyone was on board they're a little too on board if it was a real life situation, because there's a lot of things that are changing for them, right? You know, suddenly everyone is pansexual if they weren't before. Everyone is polygamous if they weren't before. And so they were all just like, okay with that. And having, you know, relationships get involved. I, I know at one point, one of the doctors checks the other doctor and says, hey, I told you she's not my girlfriend. But yeah, I mean, if feelings get involved, if you're not on board that kind of, you know, relationship or you want to be exclusive, it's going to get very complicated and very messy. Yeah. And, and, and there already, already one of the doctors, the main one, Christine, she already has uh, feelings for Omar. And one of the things that she talked about was when she saw a video, she was crying because she she said, "I love you, I love you," and that's that. totally different from just yeah. the sex act itself. So yeah, yeah. it's like the the pretty woman, no no kissing. 
Right. <laughs> right. I say who. I say when. I say who. <laughs> I, I will say I recommend it, but you know it's uh, uh, not something I would necessarily go out and seeking. I thought it was a fun read. I thought it was interesting. I, I like when they take kind of two absurd premise that separate. You go, okay, yeah, I can see, you know, a uh, disinterested science community and then trying to crowdfund through pornography. Like those separate, you go, okay, I'm, I'm on board with those together. And then, you know, taking two things that independently kind of like ideas that independently work and then trying to make them work together. You got your chocolate on my peanut butter. No, <laughs> you got peanut butter on my chocolate. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, you know, like whiskey is good and ranch is good. And then, but you know, whiskey ranch, you go, okay. But, and, but somehow this kind of, it, it works in a way that it, it's funny to kind of analyze this on a, on a deeper level because I, I can see points, you know, the, like you can make, so many kind of deeper dives into you know the whole area of sexuality and intimacy and and all of those Mm -hmm. but i feel like with this book you're kind of it's like trying to take a deeper dive into like a a porky's movie (laughs) you you know like and not to say like it's bad you know it, it is it is what it is it's it's a fun romp you know it it um you know, a couple of my favorite jokes where is the the camera that kind of follows them around. You know, they're they're saying fuck a lot, and it automatically like it's a, like that's Alexa saying like you know it, it's automatically got a cue to record when it hears the word yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, so that that was kind of a, that was then, a good a good running joke. And then, and I like too when the camera is like it starts to record. It's like oh, they're the camera realizes they're not fucking and then we'll stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that, that joke was, was, I, I liked throughout, you know, it was, it was an, it was a fun ongoing joke, but then there are other ones that felt a little bit, not, not, I mean like gratuitous, like, um, you know, the, the guru guy is using, oh, a, right. using his ball sack, like a mace. Right. Like, it, you know, it's like, it's funny, but it's not necessarily like the most Party. clever joke, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a pedestal that he meditates on <laughs> yeah or you know yeah i mean like th- those types of th- those jokes that not particularly clever but still kind of you know funny yeah i mean i i would recommend it it's probably not one that i would you know continue on with for a, a long but it it definitely has the potential to to yeah i will say also uh i forgot to add in speaking of some of the stuff that jake mentioned the art was fantastic i thought it was very clean i liked it I like the, the characters. They were all distinct. Uh, I like the designs of the aliens. So yeah, props to the artists as well. Yeah, I, I was I was going to say for as many characters that are in this book, especially alien characters, we've read books in the past, Dennis and I in the podcast where we're like, like Queen of Kenosha, not to rip on a, on that book any further, but there was times in that story where we're like, who is this the main character? Who is this? And in this one, everyone was clearly defined. I felt all the characters had their own personality. Even the even like the the, the main bad guy, she was more than like a two dimensional character. I, I just don't know if I'm gonna. I would continue the story. I, it didn't really grip me to continue it. It's very fifteen year old me would have fucking loved this, but oh, yeah. <laughs> forty five year old me <laughs> put thirty years on it. And you're like, man, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fifteen year old me would have loved it, but then have the book taken away. <laughs> yeah that's probably true that's probably you're trying true. to explain it to your, your parents you're like no it's, right. it's called money shot it's about investment banking right. <laughs> yeah 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 I, I would say pick up pick it up see what you think but i don't know if i would continue i i would recommend reading it just to see that there's there, there there are elements i like but i don't know if i'll continue on with the series yeah, and it, just like Jake said, you know, it is like like a Porky's, but with a little bit of heart. You know, there's always that part in between these sex comedies where you kind of get to know the character a little bit more. You realize they're more than just a boning machine or whatever. I yeah. I, I really feel that where you you you've got a little bit of a hint of of the deeper side of the characters, and I appreciate that. But yeah, definitely for me, 
it's just like only so much I can take of, you know, dick jokes and <laughs> yeah. we have to screw oh. every time. <laughs> and this, dick, dick jokes are plenty. Like there's yeah. the, the, the double and quadruple octuple and entendre is <laughs> the final battle between the the main bad guy and and this planet's the species savior is right. just a dick a dick fight with jizz everywhere <laughs> <laughs> so which then, uh, honestly oh, i don't want to get too deep but then you if you have dick fights like that like literal fights I mean, then is that sexual assault? I mean, it kind of like, oh, that's not so funny. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's I, I mean, it, I, it's agreed upon. This is how you fight. It's like rams <laughs> smashing heads and you know, yeah. their heads into each other. It's not like right. one going to be like, well, now I'm going to put my butt out. Well, like, no, this is weird. <laughs> the rules is that we yeah. smash heads. <laughs> so, rules of engagement. Right. Yeah. The rules so it was of engagement. Yeah. Yeah. Big I get rules it. of engagement. Rules of dick engagement? Is it dick rules of engagement or rules of dick engagement? Degagement. <laughs> Degagement. Uh, where can people follow the podcast if they want to do that? Dennis? You can find us on Twitter and the Insta at GN Explorers Club. Cool. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.